Tis the season for taxes, and if you're a stash user, you might be wondering if you owe taxes on your stash portfolio. So if you're unsure how to pay taxes on your stash account, I'm gonna help walk you through everything you need to know. We're gonna break down how stocks are taxed, how dividends are taxed on your stash account. And I'm also gonna help you determine how to know if you even owe taxes on your stash portfolio in the first place. And lastly, if you experienced any investment losses on Stash during the previous year, I'll also show you how you can actually use those losses as tax deductions to help offset your investment profits. Now, this video is not sponsored, but I do have referral links down below for my recommended options of different online tax software for using with Stash. I also have timestamps below if you want to jump ahead or jump back to any part of today's video. So with that being said, let's get started. So let's first break down what you won't owe taxes on on Stash. And firstly, no matter how much a stock or an ETF that you own increased in value, you won't owe taxes on that investment if you only bought on Stash, but you didn't sell. However, even if you didn't sell anything, you may still owe taxes on any dividend income or any interest you earn from your Stash account. So do keep that in mind. The second thing is, if your investments are in a retirement account, such as a Stash IRA, your taxes are deferred until retirement age. Alternatively, if your investments are in a Stash Roth IRA, you actually receive tax-free growth. This is because both of those IRA accounts are tax-advantaged accounts. With that out the way, let's now break down what will make you eligible for owing taxes on Stash. Now, as you know, nothing in life is free, right? And much like the income you earn from your job, the income you earn from your investments is also taxable in the United States. Because whenever you sell an asset on Stash, such as a stock or an ETF, a taxable event occurs. And when you sell your asset for a profit, you experience what's called a capital gain. For example, let's assume you bought a share of Apple stock on Stash for let's say $100 and you later sold that share of stock for $150. Well, my friend, you just experienced a capital gain of $50. Now, capital gains from investments can be categorized into two types. You have short-term capital gains and you have long-term capital gains. The good news is there are investment strategies that you can use to reduce your overall tax burden. And here are some of those strategies to help reduce your taxes from both capital gains and from dividends in your stash taxable investment account. Now, when it comes to capital gains and taxes, when holding your investments for over one year before you sell, you are taxed at the long-term capital gains rate. But if you buy stocks on Sash and sell them within one year or under 365 days, your gains are then classified as short-term capital gains, and these are taxed as ordinary income. This means your profits are taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. Yes, guys, this is the exact same tax rate that wages from your job are taxed at. However, if you buy and hold your stash investments for longer than a year or 365 days before selling them, your gains are then classified as long-term capital gains. Of course, depending on your tax bracket, this could provide you with a significant tax savings of up to 20%. And even better, if you fall into the 10 to 15% tax bracket, your long-term capital gains tax rate could be 0%. Yes, that's absolutely right. By holding your stock for at least one year before you sell, you could potentially end up paying no taxes on your profits when you sell. Now, if you want to see how the capital gains tax rate applies to your specific tax bracket, feel free to check out this capital gains tax rate chart right here for reference. Of course, guys, these are the current capital gains tax rates for the current year. You can always stay up to date with the latest tax rates on the IRS website. Next, I want to discuss dividends and taxes, because if you earned any dividends from your stash portfolio, you will also need to pay taxes on that dividend income, just like from capital gains. Because when it comes to the taxation of dividends, they are also split into two categories. You have ordinary dividends and qualified dividends. Now, ordinary dividends are taxed as ordinary income. That means at your ordinary tax rate, of course, again, based on your tax bracket. Qualified dividends, on the other hand, they're taxed at a much lower rate. Now, ordinary dividends are taxed between 10% to 37%, like I said, based on your tax bracket. And again, this may vary by year. Qualified dividends, though, they're taxed at rates of 20%, 15%, or even 0%. Again, this also depends on your tax bracket. If you'd like to see how the dividend tax rate applies to your specific tax bracket, feel free to check out this dividends tax rate chart right here for reference. Again, guys, these are the current dividend tax rates for this year. You can always stay up to date with the latest tax rates on the IRS website. Now, in order for dividends to count as qualified dividends, they do have to meet some specific criteria, which mainly has to do revolving around the holding period or how long you own the stock for. We're not gonna dive into the specifics in this video because it is a little more detailed. The main thing you have to know is you don't have to worry about that because Stash actually tracks all of this for you. And when they provide you with your tax document, they will let you know how much of your dividends were qualified dividends and how many of them were ordinary dividends. So you're essentially good to go on that front. 
As you can see, you can experience significant tax savings on both capital gains and on dividends earned by simply holding your investments for at least one year before you sell. Again, guys, this is another advantage of investing for the long term. So when it comes to your stash portfolio, whether you sold your stocks for a profit and you experienced a capital gain, or you simply earned some dividends from your stock holdings, a taxable event occurred in each scenario. But what if you experienced some investment losses on stash during the previous year? Well, my friends, you're actually in luck because you you can use these losses as tax deductions to help offset your capital gains. So for instance, if you lost money selling an investment on Stash, you can actually use capital losses and capital loss carryovers to your advantage. Together, these two strategies act as a way to help you earn back a good percentage of what you might've lost through a bad investment. Now, capital losses are the exact opposite of capital gains. Capital losses occur when you sell an investment for less than you pay. For example, let's assume you bought some shares of Apple stock on Stash for, let's say, $150, and you later sold those shares of stock for $100. Well, my friends, you just experienced a capital loss of $50. Fortunately for you, though, when you sell stocks at a loss, your capital losses can actually be used as a way to reduce the tax burden of both your current and your future capital gains. Because you can claim capital losses up to the full amount of any capital gain that you have. Essentially, capital losses from bad investments can help offset taxes owed from your profitable investments, right? And beyond that, you can also use up to $3,000 of additional capital losses to offset other sorts of ordinary income. An ordinary income is any type of income earned that is taxable at ordinary tax rates, again, such as income from your salary and wages. Any remaining capital losses over that additional $3,000 limit are then classified as capital loss carryovers. This means you can carry over those additional losses to the following years to offset future capital gains. There's also no limit on how many years years you can carry over capital losses. Together, capital losses and capital loss carryovers can act as a type of tax deduction for investors because they make it possible for investors to recover part of their losses on their tax return by offsetting capital gains and other forms of ordinary income. So let's bring this all together now and explain how you actually pay your stash taxes because you might be wondering, how am I supposed to keep track of all my capital gains, all my capital losses, all my dividends in order to accurately pay my taxes? Well, not to worry guys, stash completely takes care of all of this for you because throughout the year, stash automatically tracks all your buys, all your sales, all your dividends. And then every year come tax season, they provide you with what's called a form 1099 tax document. And generally speaking, the form 1099 tax document calculates all your investment income from the previous year. Again, this includes capital gains, capital losses, dividends, and even interest that you earned in the previous year. Now your Stash 1099 tax form sums up everything you need to know for filing your investment income along with your regular tax return. And when your tax forms are ready, you should receive an email from Stash letting you know. Now to retrieve your Stash tax documents from inside the Stash app, you just have to follow a couple simple steps and I'll help walk you through them. So let's hop on over into the Stash app right now. So once you're inside your Stash app on the homepage dashboard right here, you're gonna wanna click on your profile icon in the very top left of the app. That's gonna be your profile icon. If you click on that, you're then gonna scroll down to the very bottom of the page where it says documents and you wanna click on portfolio right here. If you click on documents portfolio, you're then gonna see different portfolio and document options. You wanna click on tax documents, right? So just open up the tax documents tab and here's where you'll find all your tax returns uh, excuse me, all your 1099 tax forms from Stash for all the previous years and of course the current year. Now, if you don't yet see your tax form for the current tax year, it means that it's likely not yet available inside the app, but this is where you'll come retrieve your tax form when it is ready, when you do receive that email from Stash letting you know. Also, of course, if you traded any crypto on Stash in the previous year, you may receive a separate 1099 crypto form just the same. Now there are multiple types of 1099 tax forms you may receive from Stash, including ones for capital gains, for dividends, for interest, and even for any miscellaneous income you earned. But typically Stash consolidates all of these forms into a single form called a Form 1099 Composite. Like I said, guys, if you don't see your tax documents yet for the current year, they're likely not yet available in your app. But again, this here is in the app is where you'll find the forms when they're ready for download. And after downloading your 1099 tax forms, they can then either be imported directly into your favorite online tax software, or you can also hand them directly to your CPA or your tax professional. 
Now, one quick tip I have for you is if you're using an online tax software, many today offer direct importing of your 1099 tax forms where their software automatically imports all your capital gains, all your capital losses, and all your dividends and other investment income. Now, for full disclaimer, I am not a tax professional, nor am I providing you legal or tax advice. I just want to give you an overview of the key points you need to know about filing your stash taxes. If you need tax advice, of course, always consult your CPA or your tax professional. Again, if you'd like to check out some of the recommended tax software for using with Stash, I have referral links down below with discounts. Now, if you enjoyed this video breaking down Stash and taxes, I definitely recommend checking out this video right here where I compare five of the top online tax software to consider using with Stash. From free to paid options, you're sure to find one that works for you. So click on over and I'll see you in that video.